So in this question, we have Toygo, or however you say it, right? And they're purchasing merchandise from a vendor in England. Now this vendor, they send them an invoice and it's for 500,000 British pounds, right? So this invoice is denominated in a currency other than the US dollar. So we're likely gonna have a foreign exchange gain or loss between the initial invoice date, which is November 20th, year four, as well as the payment date, which does not occur until January 20th of year five. Now the question gives us some uh, spot rates, which we'll go ahead and use to convert uh, the invoice in pounds to dollars for each of the dates, right? But ultimately we need to figure out how should the foreign currency transaction be reported on Toygo's financial statements for December 31, year four. All right, so we also have a reporting date in between the invoice date and the settlement date. So we're gonna have to factor in how that values um, the invoice as of December 31, year four. So we should be thinking about the five steps we learned in the lecture. We're gonna go through, calculate the initial transaction date, um, the reporting date, as well as the settlement date, and then we'll circle back and figure out what the correct answer is. So starting with step one, this is the initial transaction date, which is November 20th, year four. So Toygo, they received that invoice for 500,000 pounds. The spot rate on that date is basically one pound equals $1.25, right? So what we do is we multiply by $1.25, and that tells us for Toygo in US dollars, this invoice is $625,000, right? Now, since they're purchasing merchandise, Right, the debit is to inventory, and then the credit is to accounts payable for $625,000. Right, so on the initial date, no impact to the income statement, and um, you know we don't have any foreign exchange gain or loss yet, right? because we just use the spot rate from the initial date. So then let's move forward to the reporting date because it's applicable to this question. Right, so we have that invoice in uh, dollars, right, which was $625,000, but now we need to go ahead and recess what the value would be based on the December 31 year four spot rate, right? So as you can see in step two, we'll take that AP amount, which is 500,000 pounds, multiplied by the spot rate of $1.20. And that tells us actually the invoice now has a value of $600,000, right? So now Toygo is saying, well, we thought we were gonna have to pay 625,000 based on the initial spot rate, but now it's down to 600,000. So when we calculate, is that a gain or a loss? Well, if the prior amount was 625,000, the new amount is 600,000, that results in a gain on foreign exchange for the year one financial statements of 25,000, right? Now, how would we record the journal entry here? Well, we would need to reduce the accounts payable balance down to this 600,000, right? So we can do that by debiting accounts payable for 25,000 and then we record any gains on foreign exchange with a credit to gain on FX for the same amount of 25,000. So we could stop there and answer the question, but let's continue on to step four, which is the settlement date, right? Now we're up to January 20th, year five. And the spot rate for that date is $1.17 per British pound, right? So all we need to do is go ahead and figure out what is Toygo actually gonna pay in cash? Right, so in step four, you can see when we multiply 500,000 pounds times 1.17, that means the actual payment in dollars is 585,000. Right, so again, that's a little lower than the last time we valued that invoice at December 31, year four, which was 600,000. So as you can see in step five, again, we have a gain on foreign exchange of 15,000. Now, what would the journal entry be on the settlement date? Well, we need to remove the accounts payable balance related to this invoice. And remember at December 31, year four, it was 600,000. So that's our debit, right? When we debit accounts payable, we remove the invoice. And then we're actually paying cash. Anytime we have an outflow of cash, it's a credit. And that's for the 585,000 based on the spot rate on January 20th, year five. Now in order for that journal entry to balance, we have to also credit gain on foreign exchange for 15,000, right? So that's the full journal entry. So we've gone through the whole process. Now we can answer pretty much anything the question would ask us, but it's only focused on what would be reported in basically the year four financial statements. Well, remember, it's only gonna be between the initial date and the reporting date. 
and we only had that $25,000 gain on foreign exchange. The remaining $15,000 gain would go in the year two financial statements. And since this is a foreign currency transaction, remember our visual? Well, everything is going directly to the income statement, right? So the correct answer is gonna be a gain of $25,000 in the income statement.